Murray and Jokic, 108-106. Jokic with 25, 20, and 9. Murray had his 32, including, of course, another game winner. Uh, Porter Jr. had a night. LeBron with 30, 11, and 9. AD finished with 17 points, 15 rebounds. But the Lakers lose, and now it begins, Shams. It actually began as soon as this game ended, I would have to say. But... <sighs> We're going to be asking you all these questions. What happens to LeBron? What happens to Darvin Ham? So let's start. There's okay. three prongs to this. Let's start with LeBron James. I'm told LeBron ex is expected to play up to two more NBA seasons. So he okay. just finished year 21. He's going to play at least 23 is from what I'm told, potentially up to 23. He's got a $51.4 million player option. He could opt in. How much? Uh, he Dang. could opt out. 51.4. <laughs> The Lakers are willing to give him whatever he wants, essentially. Mm. If it's a one-year max, a two-year max, even a three-year, $164 million maximum contract if he wants to come back. LeBron James is going to have to monitor exactly how they handle the offseason, how they build a roster. Clearly, there needs to be changes to this roster. His option date deadline is June 29th. Interesting timing, right? It's mm -hmm. right before free agency and right after the draft. And what's potentially on draft night? His son, Bronny James. And in a perfect world... The Lakers have LeBron James back, and potentially they draft Bronny James. I'm told they are interested in picking him in are. the draft in June. And you know, Bronny James obviously will have a decision to make going through the pre-draft process. So that is where they stand with LeBron James and where they stand potentially with Bronny James. The other big question is the future of Darvin Ham. Mm -hmm. um, I'm told his job status is in serious peril. It is highly unlikely that he will be back <laughs> as head coach of this team. I think there's several factors. We've been talking about it for months. The disconnect with rotations, game plans, adjustments. No uh, timeouts yesterday. After the in-season tournament, they lost 10 of 13 games. And the, the benchings of Austin Reeves and D'Angelo Russell in December into January, that plays a, a part as well internally in the organization and externally. The Lakers really believe that they had the talent this season to potentially go further than they did, hmm. uh, make a potential deeper run, have a higher seed. And now they're going to go and look and be aggressive in the marketplace. One player to keep an eye on, Trey Young. Really? <laughs> okay, so the minute anybody takes the head coaching job of a LeBron team, the writing's on the wall. Like, this is not a job you're going to do for 20 years. So let's start with Darvin Ham. Any shock there? I'm not shocked just because this is what comes with being the coach of the Lakers. This is what comes with being the coach of a LeBron James team. There's pressure to win. There's pressure to... Uh, you know, con contend for a championship. And he did do some weird things. I don't think he's the best coach of all time. Sure. I think his substitution patterns were a little weird. His rotations with, you know, riding Cam Reddish for so long and his whole starting lineup thing with benching D'Lo and then benching Austin Reeves. He kind of was all over the place with his rotations. But this team, he didn't construct this team. He didn't, Spencer Dinwiddie wasn't his big move at the deadline. He didn't put like, the Gabe Vincent. We thought he was going to be this hero. That, that wasn't on Darvin Ham. And yes, a lot of it falls on him, but when it's LeBron James' team, a lot of that is on him. And we all know damn well he's pretty much the coach, the GM, and the owner of this team. So the Darvin Ham is just, usually he's just the, the coach is the fall guy. And yeah. I don't, like, again, I don't know him at all, but I, from the outside looking in, I feel like he did a pretty good job. The, the Lakers, they competed this series. They lost on two buzzer beaters. They were up double digits yeah. in pretty much every game. Like it's not like they just got their ass kicked. They got swept. It, it, it was it was close. It was tight. They could have won most of these games that they lost. But most coaches get the raw end of a deal. It's going to happen a lot. It's going to happen to JB Bickerstaff in Cleveland. It happens. It's going to happen to mul multiple coaches. It's just how it goes. And especially when you're in the Lakers and you're with LeBron James, there's expectations and there's tons of pressure. It's different. I've played for the Clippers. I've played for the, the Lakers completely different atmospheres hmm. when it comes to personnel, right? When you, when you play for the Lakers, it's a championship or nothing atmosphere for that organization, for that fan base, for everybody that li loves the purple and gold. If you fall short of championships, the first person they're always going to look at is the coach. Think about it. Every time the Lakers fall short in the playoffs, we have a conversation about the coach. This is not a new story with Darwin Ham. This is whoever's in that seat. They're going to feel it from somebody they feel who's more than capable of getting them to that place. And so <laughs> this doesn't surprise me at all that this is the conversation um, surrounding the Lakers and Darwin Ham. To me, when you're coaching a team <clears throat> like this and it's a bunch of egos and big names like that, it's, it's more like having a relationship with them, right? The hmm. dynamic of the sub. I saw Darvin Ham was going to pull LeBron James out yesterday, and he literally told him no. So, like, you can't even blame Darvin Ham 
ham on the substitutions because he doesn't even have that power to make those decisions during a game, especially in the playoffs and elimination game. So, again, he's got to be the leader. He's got to get along with these personalities. He's got to he's got to have that dynamic, and maybe there's a disconnect there. But X's and O's wise, I, you got to believe LeBron is doing what he wants on the court. This yeah. isn't up to Darvin Ham. Why would anyone want the job well, while LeBron's still there? The players do, to an extent, want to be coached. But there's a lot of player empowerment, of course, on this team. I mean, one incident that I reported on uh, last night, this morning, whatever you want to call it, February 28th. It was a win against the Clippers at home, or the Lakers' home. It was, <laughs> it was it, or the Clippers' home. It was in LA. It was a Clippers' home game at Crypto.com Arena, and and they were down about 19 points to start the fourth quarter. And really from around f six, six minutes in, five minutes in, the players took the onus of, of essentially calling the plays. And they, they noticed that there was a switch potential with Daniel Tice uh, in the pick and roll, and they attacked it over and over and over again. And they ended up winning the game. LeBron had scored or assisted 11 of 13 baskets. And that was a group of players that came together, started play calling. Now, I'm not saying Darvin Ham, that's the norm, they went though. against Darvin Ham. That's, yeah. that's a normal thing, Shums, especially when you got a LeBron James or you got a Steph right. Curry or Kevin Durant, any of these type of guys that um, can make adjustments during games, they see something. And sometimes you can wave your coach off. If, if you have that trust and they have, you have that relationship with your coach and he's calling something, he's calling, you're calling something, the rule is to always listen to the player on the court. So even if the coach is screaming at the top of his lungs and I got the ball and I'm calling something, the four guys on the floor have to listen to me. That's the rule. That pretty much goes for not even just our play. Like, if we're on the Nuggets and we see they can't guard a Michael Porter pin down, you know, I don't care if, if Malone's calling a different play. We're Doesn't riding matter. that till they till they stop it. So that <laughs> goes with matter. pretty much every offense and every team, especially a LeBron James team. But like you said, these things are glaring when it's the Los Angeles Lakers. Everybody is right. doing the same thing in the league. But with the Los Angeles Lakers, they have a complete different media aspect uh, that people look at that no other team in the league has. So who, I mean, let's just, the world is your oyster. Who, who's coaching this Lakers team? Who's ideal? I mean, I mean, listen, Darwin Ham couldn't, couldn't get better production out of, his, out of his bench. He can't coach that, right? Maybe yeah. you, can, you can make the argument that he can put them in better positions. Um, the play calling can be different. At the end of the day, guys got to go out and perform. I think he gets one more shot at it. Really? Uh, that's just my guess. Okay. You can't change coaches every year. You, well, you could. You could. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like they're going to do everything, anything they can to bring LeBron back. So yeah. it's basically if LeBron wants him back, or who right. does LeBron want? They're talking about they're going to give him an extension, they're going to draft gonna his draft son. His of course, they're going to give him the head coach, they're going to do all that. So well, we would have no clue. It's basically whoever he think is the, thinks is the best fit. Well, the good news is we didn't have to wait long for the LeBron postseason fun to begin. He kicked it off right after this game last night. Here he is. Have you given any initial thoughts of what comes next this summer or for next season? Uh, no, nah, I just want to get home to the family, honestly. Um, um, start looking at the schedule, obviously. I got, uh, you know, my son, one of my boys is just trying to decide if he's going to, you know, enter the draft or go back to school. I got another kid that's uh, playing AU ball right now. My daughter is playing uh, volleyball. Um, and my wife is doing so many great things. So it's about family right now. And then in a couple months, I got to go to Vegas for training camp. <laughs> so, you know, I got to rest my body for, for USAB, but um, you know, that's kind of the initial thoughts. Tonight, was there any thought at all that, you know, this could have been your last game with the Lakers? Um, I'm not going to answer that. Appreciate it. <clears throat> and so it begins. <laughs> The off season of mystery. <clears throat> like I said, this, this is normal, right? He's always held his cards close when it comes to free agency, when it comes to changing teams. And as players, that's what we always respected about LeBron. He's always been one step ahead of business decisions when it comes to the jersey that he wears, the teammates that he's going to play with, the coaching. Mm -hmm. He's always in control of his destiny. And, and that's something that he's earned and you got to respect in season 21. Is there a world in which somebody, another team, does a petty draft of Bronny just to, saw, to see what would happen? I saw something so funny. This dude tweeted, the Nuggets should draft Bronny and yes. then not sign LeBron. <laughs> like, is there, is there a world in which we could that see something That has a lot crazy? of double meaning. Oh, too. that would just be such a power play. I mean, this is definitely going to be a one-of-a-kind situation where you have one of the best to ever do it sort of hold the organization 
to the fire to bring his kid. Which again, this, there's or, so many levels to this because then you think about the kid and like, do you even want to the, enter like this? That's the thing. Say he already has a deal in place with whoever the Lakers, yeah. whoever. That doesn't mean a team in front of them can't just hop in that's and take I'm him, saying. knowing that all LeBron James wants is to play with his son. So <laughs> hell yeah, if I'm but a on contender, the flip side, you don't do you don't draft a kid that doesn't want to be there in the first place. If I'm like OKC or one of these teams <laughs> that have draft picks and they're already in contention, why the hell wouldn't I take Brian James if that means I get LeBron? Well, this is what I'll say. I would do it. A thousand percent. <laughs> if it's I would a team it in the first round, I'm sure that'll work out exactly how Bronny James wanted. He's going to go in the first round. If he goes in the Great second point. round and you get drafted there, obviously the team that's picking him, there, there's some level of, like, we want you. There's a desire level there. And at that point, I think LeBron James is a father. I think, I think Bronny James, he has his own representation as well. Like, he's going to have to make the best decision for his career as well as far as if there's a team in the second round, not the Lakers, they'll draft you early in the second round potentially, give you more guaranteed money. Mm. Like, that's a better situation for you individually. For sure. Plus, he can and, jump back into the portal, right? Like, and also, worst case, let's be clear. If it looks like this it's not time, happening. This whole time, LeBron has said this is a preference. It's not, it's not ride or die. It absolutely, he would love to This is the happen. Lakers making it known. We Lou. support this, and but, we want to make it happen. <laughs> absolutely. And Lewis. Lewis Bartholomew <laughs> Williams. No, you know damn good and well. Right, and we'll, be here, and we'll be here in June talking about, well, you were right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so again, we're talking about LeBron, LeBron, LeBron. At the end of the day, Bronny has shown that he's created some separation. He has his own, <clears throat> has his own representation, which is still the same thing. But at some point, as a grown man, he's going to want to make decisions for himself. That's the best decision. Who's Bronny's, who's Bronny's agent? Same agent, Rich Paul. You know Plus agent but, but this is the, <laughs> this is the thing. Let's say, let's say, let's say there's a CAA? team at like 35 that wants him, really wants him, and will give him more guaranteed Ooh. money. I'm, yeah, it's gotta, it does matter who. The, the wants who? The, well, he's got to go through the pre-draft I'm saying Bronny? Bronny. Yeah. I'm saying it gives him more guaranteed money. That is the problem that no one's talking. No one really wants him unless they're getting LeBron. He's not. He's not like this next big, big thing. He's I not like, you know what I, mean? like, I, I think, I you think do? he has potential. Well, I just like I, what is. I thought the team only would want him because of LeBron James. Like no, that that kid is. A, a, he's going to be a talent. You've you've talked to people that said. I mean, the question is isn't if is Bronny James a draft pick for multiple teams. It's where is he going to go in the draft, and is he going to be comfortable enough with wherever he lands in the pre-draft process to stay in the draft? <laughs> That's the question. This guy, LeBron, already knows who's drafted him. He already knows where he's yes. playing, and he's, he knows everything. He, you think he's just doing this just to do it? He know, he, this guy runs the whole that league. Part is, but again, uh, if, the, the if, that was the, if that was the case, he'd had no problem saying, yes, I'll be back with the Los Angeles Lakers no, next year. No, why would he do that? That's not his game. Yeah, he's that's never done style. that. No, but this is our first time ever seeing it for this reason. It's always been about LeBron James. Now he's holding his cards for Bronny James. And he, actually, I take that back. He's done this in Cleveland when he wanted to get J.R. Smith signed, when he wanted to get Tristan signed. Thompson signed. When he <laughs> wanted to get all those guys back, he held the cards and said, make sure you pay my guys, and then I'll, I'll commit to it. He's doing the same Just thing Just know, He's always in control. When we of see what Bronny James officially declare for the draft, yeah. that shit is done. Then it's done. Everyone knows. He, LeBron knows. He knows exactly where he's going. There's no way he's, he's just going to enter locker. the draft and like see where he goes like every other normal kid in the world. It's not LeBron James is only has that pool when it comes to the Los Angeles Lakers. I, I don't think the Orlando Magic care about LeBron James. I think he could be talking. I think Rich Paul if, could be talking to the Orlando Magic right they now. Want his, if they want Bronny, Bronny is his own entity. He's already created that. He's already created that 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 level of conversation. Uh, no. No. Yes. No, not on his talent yet. Absolutely. No, because that's the whole thing, right? Is that this seems premature, but they're going to sort of test the waters and see if it's viable. And then he always has the option to go back to school. The numbers weren't there, but he also was on minutes restriction. The kid just had heart surgery. <laughs> right. So he, yeah, he didn't have the season that he wanted, but he's been a pro prospect for But that's the whole health issue. is also another since glaring issue. Since he was issue. conceived, Lou? Because that doesn't count. <laughs> no, for the past two years. Listen, I think a, he has a, a chance a to... McDonald's All-American goes, goes to a, a Well, D1. there's been players that have been picked in the second round with, with worse stats. That's what I mean. I think, sure. listen, there's I, always... I don't have any second round is real. What are we talking about? It's there is a chance in college. <laughs> Those things are projections. Uh, you guys know. There is obviously a chance that he can be a better pro than he was a college player. He hasn't been a great college player yeah. with the inconsistency of his health and his minutes, like Lou just said. All I'm saying is whoever drafts him in the back of their head, you don't think it's partially because we can get his dad? 1,000%.
That's the only, I, like, yes, the, yes. Listen. Maybe the potential, sure, is it could thought? Absolutely. Oh, but yeah, that's you know, the what, main thought. What we're saying is LeBron James is in control of that. I disagree. I, I, it's teams that could give a shit less what his opinion or what his preferences are. I, I do want someone to draft before the Lakers. Right. Like that, I, want someone to cut really their, I want someone to cut their legs. <laughs> just okay. be like, eh. Like Chicago, just take him and we're make next. LeBron. Like, yeah, see how serious <laughs> he is. God, that would be an amazing draft. I might actually watch an entire draft at that point.